Milling Through History presents Sailing from Slavery to Congress, The Life of Robert Smalls. The Civil War has produced many figures in it who are unique and have stories of their own to tell. But perhaps one of the most unique figures whose story is oftentimes forgotten is that of Robert Smalls. For this is a man whose story reads almost like a Hollywood film, and yet very few people know about it. His story begins in 1839 in Beaufort, South Carolina, where he was born as a slave. In his early years, he had been raised by his mother and, showing exceptional promise, at the age of 12, at her behest, was sent to Charleston, South Carolina, where he would work as a laborer, earning $16 a week, but of that money, only $1 was he allowed to keep. The rest of it would go to his master. While in, South Carol in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, he worked multiple jobs and eventually found himself working on the Charleston docks, where he became familiar with the harbor. At 17, he would marry Hannah Jones, and it was during the early years of this marriage he would decide to purchase his family's freedom from slavery. Now, the cost for doing this was $800, and by 1860, he had only saved up about 100 of that. As a result, trying to earn the remaining $700 would have taken him decades to do. And yet, fate has a funny way of intervening. In 1861, with the secession of the southern states and the beginning of the Civil War, Charleston, South Carolina was a focal point of Union activity. The Union always wanted to get back Fort Sumter and make sure that this particular city, the one where secession all began, would suffer. For Robert, he found himself in a unique position as he was the helmsman of the CSS planter. Sailing along the South Carolina coast, he would oftentimes see the Union blockade, and in the spring of 1862, he, along with the rest of the enslaved crew members, would formulate a plan for an escape. Knowing that the blockade was not very far, Smalls would wait until an opportunity arose, where the captain and the white crew members of the ship would all be going ashore to spend the night there. Taking an opportunity, Smalls requested that could the captain give permission for the families of the enslaved crew members to come aboard and have a visit? Now, this was a customary thing that had happened from time to time, and the captain agreed to the request, with the proviso that the families returned back to their homes on land before curfew. Now, for the enslaved crew members, they would act as if nothing was out of the ordinary, but they did inform their family that night of the intention to escape and how they planned to do it. While everyone on board the CSS planter was nervous, it was said that the only one who felt confident in the plan was Robert Smalls. Putting on the uniform of the ship's captain, Smalls would pilot the ship out of the dock and, when passing by all of the checkpoint and fortifications, would blow the appropriate signals in order to indicate that nothing was amiss. After passing Fort Sumter, the CSS planter would make a beeline right for the Union blockade, and it wasn't until after they had gotten out of the guns a range of Fort Sumter that they lowered the Confederate flag and instead raised a white flag. It would be the USS Onward which would capture the planter, and upon capturing the ship, they would discover that Robert Smalls brought not only the ship and the enslaved people into Union custody, but also a treasure trove of war material. There was ammunition for cannons, a few loose cannons, but also maps which showed all of the defenses of the Charleston area, including where the mines were laid and the fortifications, some of which show that there were no defenses prepared and that the Union could easily take them. This would result in the Union Army successfully capturing Coles Island without the loss of any life. Overnight, Robert Smalls became an immediate hero and celebrity within the North, while he became a villain in the South. Smalls would go and meet Abraham Lincoln in Washington, D.C., and help to convince him to enlist African Americans into both Army and Navy groups so they could help to bring about an end to the war. 
Smalls would join the U.S. the U.S. Navy and help fight the Civil War along the South Carolina coastline, namely due to his extensive knowledge of the entire region. In 1864, though, Smalls would encounter his first case of racial, of racial prejudice in the North as he was visiting Philadelphia and got onto a streetcar. While the car got filled up, he was told he would have to give up his seat. Looking at the situation, Smalls opted to get off of the streetcar, figuring that there's no reason for him to be on there if he's not even welcome. Word of this disgrace within the city of brotherly love spread very quickly throughout Pennsylvania, and immediately legislature cited that if a hero of the war was to be treated like this, then it's necessary to desegregate our public transportation, and in 1867, Pennsylvania would pass a bill making it illegal to segregate public transportation within the state. Following the Civil War, Smalls would return back to South Carolina, purchasing the home where he had once been a slave. He would become a force in South Carolina politics, being elected into the South Carolina House of Legis uh, Representatives, and would help to pass through the Homestead Act along with the numerous civil rights bills uh, within the state. In the early 1870s, he would be elected into the United States House of Representatives and would work to keep Union soldiers in South Carolina. However, after the election of 1876, his efforts to keep Union soldiers within the state would come to a halt as a compromise was reached between National Democrats and National Republicans to remove all federal troops from the South. With the return of the Democrats within South Carolina politics, Robert Smalls found himself increasingly at odds with them. The Democrats would work tirelessly to disenfranchise freed blacks within the state and attempt to prevent any possibility of their losing power. In fact, Robert Smalls would be the first and last Republican to be elected from the 5th Congressional District in South Carolina until 2011. The Democrats, though, had their eyes specifically targeted on Robert Smalls and would do everything in their power to get him removed from office. This would include creating a fake bribery scandal, which would eventually lead to, his, to Robert Smalls being defeated in the next congressional election. And while he was defeated in congressional elections, Robert Smalls would eventually be appointed by Benjamin Harrison as the collector of the Port of Beaufort and would remain in this position until 1913 with a brief temporary pause when Democrat Grover Cleveland was re-elected to a second term. Now, while he has never been considered one for local politics in close community locations, it was noted that in the early 20th century, it was Robert Smalls who prevented a lynch mob from hanging two African-American men as he was able to pressure the mayor and the sheriff into knowing that they would have to stop a lynch mob or else he would send out his runners to inform the black community to rise up and burn the town down. Out of fear that this would actually occur, the lynch mob was stopped, and Robert Smalls got one last victory over those who attempted to hold back African Americans. He would pass away in 1915 after suffering numerous medical conditions and be buried in the local cemetery in Beaufort, South Carolina. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.